ain't been around in so long, I forgot to put my mic on. Today we got head coach Rick Brunson. How you doing, sir? What's going on? How you doing, sir? It's so so funny how the world works. Um, you no, know, Fatima, man, that's my girl, man. First time I talked to you, you said the same thing. <laughs> so, shout out to Fatima, man. She just got a a joy about her. Um, but it's funny how God works. I linked up with her. She told me about you know your style and things like that, how you go about things, and she said it's a lot of like. Um, people are misled by perception and, you know, <laughs> assumption about how you act, you know, but they have no idea who you are as a person. You know, we talked about that for about 30 minutes. And I was like, let, 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 let's set it up. Let's talk or whatever <laughs> like that. And, and, and your response was so like uh, warming and not, you know, like uh, I'm so busy or things like that. <laughs> you know, you was just off the strength, you know. So I mm -hmm. want to say that on camera first and foremost. We appreciate that. You know, know you got a lot of busy things going on and season coming up. Um, but I just want to start with that, saying we appreciate you coming on wow, and thanks, giving us some man. of your time. Thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah, no problem, no problem. So let me just get into uh, the start. Um, to piggyback off what I just said, your coaching style, right? It's extremely, you can see it from afar. It's extremely disciplined. Now mm -hmm. I'm a coach too, so I don't look at it like as a hollering and things like that. I see the discipline side of it, right? Obviously, you came from a, a, a background of John Cheney and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, I was always curious, uh, why is that style so important to you first? Because um, we in a 2021 20, generation where it's just quite frankly frowned upon, right? <laughs> People look at it like, what is he doing? Really? Like with anybody that coaches mm -hmm. like you, like they just want to go crazy when they see that, but they don't see the side that... Um, First of all, how much is needed, you know, especially with the type of kids that you're coaching. Mm -hmm. So um, can you talk about why that's important <clears throat> to you? Uh, just, well, you touched on it. You know, obviously my my hero, my idol, my dad, my granddad is, is uh, Coach Chaney. Yeah. Um, yeah. And how he uh, coached us was was pretty much the same way I coach now. But people, like you said, don't understand. Like, to me, you can't yell and scream at kids mm -hmm. for two hours. And then, you know, you go home, <laughs> eat dinner, watch a nice TV, yeah. sleep in a nice warm bed, get yeah. a nice hot shower, yeah. and then that's it. So, and I say that because, like you said, a lot of people don't know, I'm, I'm in Camden High every day. Uh, you know, I go to school every day. Um, I could be in Dallas watching, you know, my son play, but I, I prefer to be with my kids because if I show them that I care and I show them that it's bigger than basketball, like, I want those guys to be successful off the court. So when they see that, then you can yell, scream, and do whatever you got to do because they know it's coming from a place of love. And I'm pushing them. Like me yelling and screaming, I, I'm not yelling and screaming like you're an idiot. I'm yelling and screaming because you could do better. You better than that. Can, can I cut you off and then <laughs> keep going? Because I, 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 want, I want people to understand the importance of that, though, because it's, it's perception, right? People think you're just yelling just to be yelling. Why is he yelling at these kids? And I think it's really important to expand on that because, like it or not, this is the framework or the quote-unquote norm mm -hmm. of how we yeah. are supposed to interact with kids. So I, I was not say, understanding his love behind it. Yeah, well, I, I would say this: like, first of all, if you like, I don't care what anyone thinks about me. Mm -hmm. Everyone has an opinion of me. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I'm I'm happy. And, mm -hmm. I'm comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you come to practice every day, if you come to camp high every day. You can just look at it, the student body. Like, it's not just the players, the kids, coach, everyone, you know. And I, I get respect because I show respect and I care. I generally do care. But, and all in all, we have an elite program, elite athletes, elite players. They have bigger goals than the average kid, you know, like like mm -hmm. I live in Cherry Hill mm -hmm. or, or guys in Morristown. No disrespect to nobody, mm -hmm. but like, I got guys that, you know, this is all they got. To, to help their family, hmm. you know what I mean? Like this is hmm. the, this the, I'm talking about getting a degree, getting a job and taking care of their family and then setting the precedence for their little brother or their kid or their cousin. So that's how I look at things. Mm -hmm. So if, the, if I could change one kid to get an education, to go to college, to get a degree, he can set up his whole family and then he can teach. So that's how I look at it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like the way I coach, I'll just say, stay home. <laughs> would, you, would you coach that same way if you did coach a Morristown or Cherry Hill? Yeah, they, they would. First, let's just be clear. <laughs> when I got hired here, or when I did my interview process, I made it very known how I'm going to coach. Don't hire me. 
So I gave them the opportunity. Look, I'm yelling, I'm screaming. I make you some words that y'all may not like. Don't hire me. I don't need this. Like, mm -hmm. think about it. Like, you know, like, what a high school coach get paid? Come on, yeah. man. That money was spent last <laughs> night on some pizza. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, to yeah. me, like, don't hire me. Right. And and am I volatile? No. But I'm a motivator. Coaching is, to me, 50% motivation. Like, I spend half the game telling you how good you are. And how and you're not doing or living up to your expectations, and they know it. But I asked the question to y'all: Have you seen kids, my kids, frown back at me or say like, Psh, uh, "No, they like this," okay? Because they know I'm right. We had Taquan on, <laughs> and he, he he couldn't stop talking about the influence that you had in mm -hmm. his life, yep. positively. Yeah. So, so no, no, <laughs> yeah, not at all, not at all. Um, what was this job? What you expected? The reason I asked you that, um, a lot of people think they want to play for Cam to High. A lot of people think they want to play against Cam to High. A lot of people think they want to coach Cam to High. <coughs> but until you in them shoes and you understand that this environment isn't normal for mm -hmm. a high school environment. That's, that's a good question. You know, I felt it's easier than I thought it was. See, people have a misconception of like, like, like you say, everyone wants to come to the party. Everyone wants to dance, right? Right, that's the easy part. But no one wanted to pay to get in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I say this because, like, for me, kids want discipline. That's just the reality of it. Yeah. But they don't want just discipline and you walk out the door and, and that's it. They want true discipline. They want to be told what I need to do, how I need to do it to be successful. Mm -hmm. And, excuse me. So when I took the job, I heard all the things. Oh, the fans going to be yelling at you. This person, parents, da da da. I ain't had no issues with nobody because I think I'm a, everyone, you know, I come across from Canada mm -hmm. knows I'm genuine and, you know, and I got no problem. If you have an opinion, I don't, that's cool. I listen to you, but I've been doing this. I did, I tell my kids every day what I've done or what I'm doing or helping you guys. I did it twice personally and I did it with my son. So I know what success is and I don't mean NBA. I mean just being successful in life. I made mistakes. I got caught up in, in, in dumb stuff as a, you know, as a young man. And do you quit? Do you blame people? Or do you say, you know what? I'm just going to buckle down, discipline myself, and try to be better. Do you respond to opinions? No. I, I mean, you're going to say what you want to say, man. Yeah. I, I don't care. Come to practice. Just come from on your own skin. Yeah, come to, bring your... If you that good, come to practice. If you mm -hmm. think I can, you could do a better job, come. Because it's not coaching. Like, I could drop a play for DJ and go score. Oh, man, he can coach. Man, that's... How many plays I'm going to drop a DJ? Right out of a game, I'm most of the time motivating, motivating. Get like I know what what makes DJ ticks. I know what makes Taekwon like play harder. Like I know that because I took my time to figure it out. Most coaches ain't doing that because they worry about they don't get paid enough. Worry about going home, having a good meal. Can't, it, it, expand on that for a second because um, I think a lot of coaches think opposite of what you they think they could come in for two hours they think they don't have to be involved in the schools and academically again you're not in the schools because of the paycheck you in it because you understand what type of influence that will have on this program let's just make it very clear i'm let's be honest i make last year i made after taxes i got a stipend for thirty nine hundred dollars and i make one hundred and twenty five dollars a day to be a substitute and i got two kids after well one now that I'm supporting the other ones I don't mm -hmm. have to support mm -hmm. and she's in college so like that, realistically come on man like I do this for the love when you coach high school it's definitely for the love now there's guys who coach that teaching jobs that's their you know, that's their livelihood mm -hmm. of course but you still coach it for the love and so that's just my passion I will hope so <laughs> I, I will hope so yeah. um you spoke on DJ for a second, right? And everybody want to talk about the exterior of, of DJ. You know, he, he has little to any flaws offensively, you know, how he performs on the courts, all the accolades and things like mm -hmm. that. But I always say when anybody come up to me and talk about DJ, if you knew this kid off the court, you like it, it, it whatever you think of him would rise 10, 10 <laughs> because he's like, it, you don't, you don't, you don't see that in guys that get this much publicity you, you you just don't see them be as humble be as hard working be as team oriented mm -hmm. you know and just want to keep getting better no matter what a lot of people just not preview to be around that <laughs> right mm -hmm. how, how is it for you 
coaching a talent like that along with his demeanor off the court. It's actually pretty difficult because mm. he does nothing wrong. Mm. So, he, like for me, I, 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 I mean, say this because mm. it's jokingly, I mm. say because people think I'm serious all the time, but jokingly, I always say, look, I want kids in trouble. I want negativity. Mm -hmm. I need somebody to yell at. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I say that to him. Mm -hmm. Like I, the other day, I sat down with all the players, which I do, you know, probably monthly, go over the grades, and I looked at DJ. And I'm like, man, what are you sitting here doing, man? Like, the guy does everything he's supposed to do. He's the hardest working guy you got. He loves basketball. He just a great kid. But that goes to his parents, mm -hmm. and he ain't the only one. All my kids, most mm -hmm. of my kids, are like that. Mm -hmm. But his parents, obviously, uh, Wani. And, mm -hmm. and, and Sharita, they do mm -hmm. a great job raising him. Mm -hmm. He's easy to coach. When I yell at him, it's hilarious. I laugh inside when I yell at him because he don't even say nothing. Like, okay. So when you do find something, you gotta. Oh, I kill him. It's like <laughs> one little happened. thing. I'm going off on him because because you ain't gonna get another chance. Because yeah. it'd be like once every other month you gotta yell at him about <laughs> something stupid. You know, so I, I'm a get him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But no, he, he he's a pleasure, man. Like yeah. when you bet when your best like they say this yeah, so yeah, yeah, cliche is, yeah. but when your best player. It's like that. It's easy, but you know, yeah. he's, he's 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 a great great kid, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, if, if if you think about your career in the NBA, it's it's extremely impressive what you did. Like <laughs> you, you you played almost a decade. Mm -hmm. You know, like how many teams you played for? I think like seven, eight. My players will tell you they always like like you me. was you was you was literally always fighting for a job, but you always got a job. And I, I think if you really break that down, like that's extremely hard to do. Mm -hmm. You know, um again, your whole your whole makeup, you can see it in your players, right? Um we know how talented your teams has been since you've been at Canada High. How do you keep them humble and hungry? You know, I know that's an extension of who you are, but yeah. it's, you're still working with kids in in 2021 that's this talented. How, how do you do that? So, to to go back for me, like, um, so I'm the only player in NBA history, so I do got a record. My record is the only player to play nine years on nine non-guaranteed contracts. Mm -hmm. That's my record, right? So, mm -hmm. what do you, what, like, what becomes of that? Like, to me, so every year, you're not, so the guarantee date when I was playing was like January 12th. So you gotta play all, all the way to January 12th. And I used to be on eggshells, like, damn, am I gonna get cut, am I gonna get cut? Never got cut when I made it. Mm -hmm. So I take that, so it obviously it takes great discipline, right? And obviously you learn that from, from my college coach. So that discipline I take, and I just try to install it into these kids. I said, like, when I walk in the gym, they know where I come from. They know everything about me, everything. Whatever happened, whatever's in the paper, whatever, they know everything, but there's no secret. So it's easy for me to, to relate to them because like, I was a McDonald's All-American, so I can relate to DJ. I was an MVP of the game, so I can relate to His dad was a McDonald's all his granddad. He gonna be the first, fingers crossed, first grandson, father, grandfather, McDonald's All-American. Me and my son, Wani and his dad, like this thing was six father son McDonald's All-American. He gonna be the first grandson, father, son, so I can relate. I can relate to Rodney Barge, who no one knows. He, we call him the Team Barber. He's like, you know, our no disrespect, but he's one of our bench players. And but I can relate to because I sat on the bench, so I know how important it is to sit there and never play, but be a big influence on the team. I've been there, so I think I can relate to all levels. And I just, this is my life experiences that I had, and I just started sharing with those guys. Was it any transition at all for you coming from the um, NBA coaching never. ranks to the to the kids? Never. Because to me, I coached at University of Virginia, University of Hartford, I coached in the NBA. And like at Virginia, right, I had Mike Scott. Mm. Still talk to him. Jeff Jones. Like I, I can name players that I've coached. To me, coaching is all about relationships. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like J Jeff Van Gundy has been came to high multiple times. Like no one knows who, I don't know. We don't put it on social media. I don't have social media. Mm -hmm. But like my relationships with the people I've worked with or coached with, it's the same, like Derrick Rose, that's my guy. Uh, I don't want to name drop, mm -hmm. but I when I work with these guys, it's, I be get, you get a relationship with them. The difference is of high school kids, you kind of mold them and shape them at a young age. See me, like you coach the NBA, you kind of manage people at times. I keep hearing that. And then when you get to this level, but I I, I got I got in with a few players because they allowed me to get in because you know of who I was in terms mm -hmm. of like, I really genuinely care. 
And so high school, though, it's easy because, you know, you obviously get the respect because you played and you coach. But you're at pure. some point, they're going to know if you if you BSing. You know what I'm saying? That's, so, that's the part I love yeah. most about these kids. <laughs> like, they, they way smarter than us growing yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they see right through you when you yeah, fade. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't walk in like, yeah, I played in the league. I used to yeah. kill people. Yeah. Come on, man. Like, coach, yeah. you was a bum. You know what I mean? That's, 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 how, that's, how, that's how they look at it. Yeah. Nah, nah, for sure, man. For yeah. sure. Um, I, I know you're going to give me the, 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 the coach's answer, but I'm going to ask anyway. What's your expectations and goals? No, I'm never. I don't give coach's answer, man. I'll be honest, man. I expect to win a state championship. That's just reality. And that's how I coach. Like, y'all should expect that. Now, if we don't, okay, that's on me. You know, that's on you. We put the onus on us. Yeah, yeah we're, we're the favorite. I like that. I'm never going to say, ah, right, we're gonna, yo, we got seven Division One players. You know, if we can't, if I can't put them together and teach them how to play together and we all fight for one common goal, then I'm not doing my job. You going to beat Sierra Canyon this year? See, that's the crazy thing. Like, everyone talks about Sierra. We play Mount Verde Academy. You know who that is? Nah. Everyone talk because it's LeBron. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not that person, bro. Not, I'm just saying, not, like, no, 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 I, I can't. I'm, yo, I'm, 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 I'm and no, no, Sierra Camp. Sierra Camp is yeah, good. It ain't no this. It ain't no this. We play the number one team in the country, and I haven't heard one person come up to me and say, "Yo, what's up?" It ain't no disrespect, but Mount Verde is. We might get blasted. Mount Verde is a monster, bro. I might, I might get, I might get like, like sick that game and not coach. Mount Verde is a monster, bro. Yeah, senior dominated what? Mount Burr? Yeah. They got... That's what Ben I mean, Simmons So let me ask you a, you a question real quick. Why did you say them first? Did you see their schedule so far? Because they got dude. Like, it's, not, it's not even just Mount Burr. They got Burr. who? Mari Belly, right? I don't know. Uh, right, exactly. Who the How many followers he got on Instagram? Who, who he played with? I don't know. Sierra King. He got my, but he I got thought it was like LeBron. Four million. See, look. See, look. That's see, all the... See, here's a scoop coming to me. Yo, y'all, y'all, I want to get a ticket against LeBron's son. I'm like, man, what about that team that they're coming in with with gorillas? Perception, bro. Yo, going to what about Roselle Cavley? Roselle Perception. They open with Roselle. Perception, bro. Ain't they got a know. stud. Who, who Roselle got? Kid going to North Carolina. Uh, Wichert. He's good. Simeon Wichert. His brother gave us about 31 years, two years ago. Yeah, yeah, but I mean that's that's how you gotta you know you gotta you gotta look at it that way, bro. But I, I think 30, huh? you know like you you ain't even blink your eye when you said that the expectation is a state champion. Yeah. No, no, like it because is. we still gotta compete. Yeah, yeah, like I'm not no gonna say what? Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like I'm gonna put the I've always put pressure on myself, you know if you want to call it pressure, but mm -hmm. you know, you I'm gonna put call it pressure. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna pressure on the kid like yo y'all want it this we gotta do go get it. I know we work, you know what I'm saying. I know we live in the gym. I know we care about each other. So it's just a matter of if we can put it together. Let me ask you this real quick. So obviously you could do that with your program because of the caliber of kids you have and where they want to go. Uh, could you put those type of expectations and pressures on a, a average level no. of talent? No, or to me, it's your audience. It's always, like to me, a sign of a great coach or a good coach, excuse me, is to me, you have to adapt to your players. Like, I don't walk in the gym and say, yo, I can coach, and y'all gonna follow me. Y'all gonna do my system. Like, okay, let's say it's my system, and we gonna run nothing but half-court stuff. Now, how good is DJ gonna be? How good is this guy gonna be? To me, I look at my audience, oh, we can do this, we can we can press, we, well, I'm gonna adapt to y'all. So, I, I'm not the type of coach that thinks it's about me. And that's one thing I've learned about high school coaches here. No disrespect. <laughs> no, First of all, they don't even play us. It's a fact. They, it's, everyone, it's everyone is trying to protect their legacy. Well, I don't even know what a high school legacy is. I've never heard of a like. To me, I play anybody because it's for the kids. Mm -hmm. If I lose, cool. I go play Mount Verde. Okay, they beat us. All right. Like I'm gonna still go home and, and get a nice, good night's sleep, and come up the next day and we are gonna work harder. But I got coaches in our conference, and I'm gonna say it on camera, like. Are canceling games? Why are y'all canceling games? Because like I don't, you're never gonna be as talented as Camden High. So don't tell me, oh, we're not good this year. You're never gonna be as good as Camden High. The problem is, and I'm gonna put it out there, Camden High is disciplined, talented, and now we smart. We think we play with our brain. That's crazy combination. Nobody wants to see that. But before I got here, yep. it was yep. like, oh, I play Camden High because if we beat, we gonna beat until they dumb. One of them attributes possibly wasn't there. Yeah, we're going to beat them. But now we're smart. We play with our brain. We think the game. Oh, and we better than y'all. So, like, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm just going to say, like, coaches around here, it, it's just mind-boggling to me. Well, <laughs> but it goes back to the, 
which again, I don't know why this is in high school basketball. And I've been coaching in New Jersey for high school basketball for the last 10 years. And I, the, the ego, the ego was insane in high school high sports. School. This is high school sports. Why do you have an ego? And we all need some type of ego as a man. But yours is like you the head coach of the New York Knicks yeah. and won eight championships. Why? I, I've been trying to figure this out forever. Like I, I, when I walk in the gym, like I, I, I look at, I'm excited about man. That's D. Like I see people, oh that's DJ, oh that's Aaron. I be like, that's good for those guys. Yeah. I, I don't. I lived this. So I'm like, wow. But like these coaches, they walk around like it's them. I'm like yo, like mm-hmm. I don't know. I, 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 hey, I've been living in this area for 25 years. Um. I, I watched my, my son play in, in Chicago and how high school was there. To me, man, like, it doesn't matter about wins or losses at this level. It's about teaching guys playing the right way and getting experience because whether you go to college or play college basketball, it's still, to me, you can learn, get a life lesson. Like, you know what I mean? If you play against Camden or you beat Camden or you lose to Camden, everything's a teaching moment. You know what's so funny about that? I don't know if you remember when I was at uh – BCIT West West Hampton a couple years back when um um Lance and Taquan was still here y'all y'all beat us by fifty oh, yeah yeah see look no I remember that, that's that's right, no this is what I remember I remember <laughs> the, the coach had a black suit on that's all I remember yeah. I'm like oh this dude dressed up I'm looking at myself like damn I look crazy over here because I don't know how to dress the kids will tell you I'm a bum. But I'm like, damn, maybe I need to wear a suit. <laughs> you, 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 gotta, you gotta take a ride to Macy's when you can't can the hog. But my point being is when they beat us by 50, right? And I I looked at the other assistant coaches. I said, if you think about it, there's no way we can lose this game. We, we play in a top 10 team in the country. You know, you see top to bottom how good they are. It's like the, 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 it was it was packed two hours before. And they they at our house. It's like you you you. And I, and I, what my, my my point is saying that is it's like like people running from y'all and things like that. They not seeing like the positive and the learning lessons yeah. from it. You really got to see nine Division One basketball players. So if you're so called good, okay, here you go. And one thing about I take pride in, and I want Camden to take pride in this. Like we play the right way. I co- I try to coach the right way in terms of. Listen, I'm not gonna embarrass people, man. I'm not gonna run the score up. But I am going to coach all the way to them because those those JV guys who come in in the fourth quarter, they practice all year just to mm-hmm. play in that one quarter. You never know. So the the Rodneys of the world, I'm going to coach them just as hard. I can't just sit down and say, oh, yeah, y'all have fun. That's not how I coach. So I'm coaching all the way to the end, but I'm not going to, like, you know, embarrass people. I don't believe in that. Now I've heard people come up to me, and I won't say no name. You got to blow this team out. You got to do this. Man, I'm not doing that, man. We, you're trying Because when you go to the next level or you go to, you know, your next phase in life, that's not reality. You know, this is high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and karma is real too, you know. <laughs> but they said, oh, yeah, they, they were running up on us. Well, all right, man. But it ain't, I'm not, you know, we're not going to do that. Yeah, but. It's some type of integrity you got to have. Well, I appreciate you coming on, Coach. I want to end with this. So the man to the right of you is an inspiring <laughs> coach. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I'm not sure if you saw any episodes, but he talks about it all the time. So let's end with this. Any advice you have for him as an aspiring coach? Never coached high school, never coached anything in his life, but he's <laughs> he's trying to get on track. So. Trying to get on track. Yeah, so what you what you got? Some general advice for him. I would just tell you, be true to yourself. A give to others. Mm-hmm. Um, don't expect anything in return. Uh, study as hard as you can. Understand the game. All right, and if you don't know, get an answer. Mm-hmm. Like, don't act like you know because you have to show the kid I know more than you. Because there's things I don't know, and I'd be like, y'all, I'll talk to y'all tomorrow, and I'll come back with the answer. So, to me, always have an answer for him. You can never be like, because I said, okay. no, I'll get you an answer. <laughs> <laughs> Hear that so much? Because <laughs> I said, do it, boy. Let's do it. All right, appreciate you coming oh, on, coach. Man, no problem, man. Thank you, guys, man. Got the mic. Yeah, I, oh, you was on. I, I remember that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>